Hello all. In the last session, we have understood what the use case is all about. Again, by the way, this is the life cycle that we have already discussed in one of the earlier module. For those of you who haven't watched video of this life cycle, please have an eye on that. So in the last session, we have understood what the use case is all about, where we have talked about what about the different different columns, what about the different different features we have. Right. So in this session, let's go slightly ahead in the second phase of this life cycle, which is all about running the ETL pipeline. Again, by the way, in a nutshell, the end goal of this phase is all about you will end up getting your clean data. Oftentimes, it is known as a featureized data. Right. Now, as soon as you have this featureized data, you can send this featureized data to this data analysis purpose where you can leverage various data visualization plots, packages, tools, and things like that. So that at the end of the day, you can make some meaningful conclusions from the data you have, because this is the end goal, right? Again, regarding the problem statement we have, it is all about you have to read data from the SQLite database. Again, in the previous case studies, right, we have data in the form of CSV format, which we can read very, very easily using a read CSV function. Again, by the way, this is a default function, which is available in the pandas package, right? Again, this is something that we have used extensively. Now, in this session, we have this data, but in the form of a database, or you can say we have this data in our database. Now, we have to read this data from this database. Again, if I will talk with respect to the life cycle we have, we are in this phase. We are trying to extract data from the sources we have. Now, in this case study, the source is my database, right? The moment we read the data from this database, we will actually end up getting our raw data. We will send this raw data to this transformation phase and then we will end up getting our featureized data. Again, before going ahead in this case study, let me tell you some of the frequent packages which will help you a lot while doing data collection, data cleaning, data analysis and things like that. Again, by the way, we have already used these packages multiple times in all our previous case studies. The first one is exactly my pandas that we have used extensively if we have to do, let's say, data manipulation or if we have to do, let's say, data cleaning or let's say if we have to do something known as a data wrangling or if we have to do something known as a data transformation. Again, by the way, it could have the multiple terms, but believe me, all these terms have a similar meaning. If you have to do numerical computations on top of data, that's where you can leverage the power of NumPy. Let's say, okay, can you compute a mean of data or can you compute a median of any certain feature, right? Or can you compute some percentile values? Again, don't worry, we will deep dive into what a percentile is, what a median is, what a mean is, as soon as we will go ahead in the case studies. Don't worry about that. Similarly, when it comes to something known as, okay, let me minimize that, cool. When it comes to something known as a data visualization section, right, data visualization section, there is a base module, which is a matplotlib. So matplotlib is a base module, which is extensively used in case of data visualization. If you need your plots very quickly and very fast, you can think of a package often known as a Seaborn. Again, typically, if you need dynamic plots, you can leverage a power of Plotly and Cufflinks. So these are, again, by the way, there are tens of data visualization packages. But in context of real world, these three are primarily used. So for those of you who don't know basics of these packages, Please have an eye on that video where I have explained you how to cover the basics of these packages. Please have an eye on that. So first and foremost, let me rename the notebook name. I can say as uh, Amazon underscore analysis, right? Let me just click on the rename button. Sounds cool. Now let me import all the packages which will help you a lot while doing analysis, cleaning and things like that. I can say that. Can I import the pandas? Let me create a shortcut or alias SPD. Similarly, can I import the NumPy package? Let me create a shortcut or an alias as NP. Similarly, can I import, let's say, a Seaborn package, right? Let me create a shortcut or an alias as SNS. Similarly, can I import the matplotlib package? And let me go inside a sub package, which is a pyplot, which is extensively used when you have to do a data visualization. Let me create a shortcut as PLT. 
let me just execute it using alt plus enter now the challenge is all about you have to read data from a sql lite database so for those of you who don't know what a sql lite database is all about let me explain this in a simple english term again this sql lite database by the way this is a open source relational database what it means is that at the end of the day we can store data in the form of rows and columns right again i can't deep dive into this term because database itself is a very very broad area so if i will explain this term in a very layman way it's all about it is typically used to perform the database operations typically let's say on android devices sometimes even on the ios devices so it is used to perform the database operations on android devices or on ios devices such as if you have to store data manipulate data or if you have to do data retrieval from the database itself again by the way it is a it is a by default android database sqlite is a by default android database so let me explain you a simple pseudo code how to actually read data from the sqlite database so the first step is as simple as that you have to establish your sql connection or your sqlite connection in a nutshell you can say as you have to define a connection engine or a engine that can retrieve your data from the sqlite database that you have now as soon as you have your engine or your connection engine the second thing that you have to do is you have to run a query you have to run your query again the database you have right in this database there is a table let's say i have a table as let's say a uh, users tables so in this table i have my actual data in the form of rows and columns right so if i have data in the form of rows and columns i can say that okay this is a 2d data i can say that since it is a 2d data i can store this data into 2d data structure and that's what the data frame is all about right it means that the moment i will run a query it will return a 2d data structure hence i can store it in a data frame and that's what we need now the immediate doubt that you might get is how you can actually end up getting this table again by the way there are multiple ways if you have a mysql interface in your pc you can easily get this table but for those of you who don't know what a mysql is or what a database itself you can use a shortcut you can use the file okay where we have file you can use this file which is a database.sqlite you can upload this file on a website often known as a sqliteonline.com and over there you can check what exactly is a table name it is a shortcut again by the way while doing a sql connection you need one more package which is known as a sql lite 3 package in python programming so this is the whole pseudo code at which you have to shine a light on now let me explain the whole pseudo code in a simple python code so that you can connect things i can say as can i import something known as a sql lite 3 package right now using this sql lite 3 package that we have right can i call a inbuilt function which is a connect function just to establish a connection so here i am going to say as okay just copy this file path okay very first let me show you one more thing if i press shift plus tab that's all about the signature very very straight forward not rocket science thing it says that okay where exactly your database is available now we have to just mention that okay this is a path and this is a database file name where exactly my database is available i will say that okay this is the path right and the database name is database dot sql lite right look at this database dot sql lite sql lite is an extension let me append a concept of raw string right so that it will help our sql lite package just to read the database file very very efficiently i will say that okay let me store it in a connection engine object or a connection object let me just execute it so if i will say as okay what about the type of the connection you have look at this it says that this is a sql lite 3 connection now as soon as you have this connection you can call a pandas read underscore sql query function just to read data now i am going to say as okay let me write a simple command then i will explain you just in a while don't worry i will say as select star right from the table name we have the table name is my reviews and here i have to mention what my connection is if i will press shift plus tab look at this it says that okay what about the sql command and what about the connection you have the connection is my connection i will say this is a connection now let me explain you what this command actually is it says that 
Select basically means I am going to select all the columns. Again, this reviews is a table, right? This star means all columns and all rows. Now, this command itself says that select all columns and all rows from the table you have. Now, as soon as I will execute this line of code, now this is the whole data, right? Let me store it in a data frame object, let's say in df. Let me just execute it. Now, if I say as df.shape, now look at this, it says that you have that much number of rows and that much number of columns. Again, by the way, for those of you who have any doubt, please do let us know via QA of the course. Again, by the way, this is the life cycle of what we have discussed so far, right? We have extract our data, right? This df, right? This df is exactly my raw data because the moment we will do a data extraction, we will actually end up getting our raw data. Now, we have to send this raw data to this data transformation phase so that we will end up getting our featureized data or you can say we will end up getting our clean data. Now, in this data transformation step itself, there are lot of cleaning you can think of. It depends upon the use case you are solving. Let's say, okay, can you remove some duplicate rows? Can you remove some irrelevant or can you remove some invalid rows? Can you check the data type or can you fix the data type you have? Can you fix the missing values that you have? Can you do all these cleanings? And this is what the problem statement is all about. It's all about you have to do a data preparation or in a nutshell, you have to prepare your data for the analysis purpose, right? This is what you have to do in this session. Again, by the way, if I will say, okay, what about the type of DF? It says that this is a data frame. Very, very simple thing. If I say df.head, right, let me pass four. These are the first four instances. Now the first cleaning, let's say, okay, can you remove some irrelevant or can you remove some invalid rows, right? So if I say as df.columns, right, I'm going to say columns. Now look at this. These are all the features you have. Now let's talk about this helpfulness numerator feature and this helpfulness denominator feature. Okay, let's talk with respect to the snapshot so that you can connect things. Right. Okay. This is the snapshot we have. So this 134 is actually my helpfulness denominator, right? It's all about nothing but the number of people who have reviewed. Whereas this 129 is nothing but helpfulness numerator, right? Which is all about number of people who find the review helpful. Now from this, you will notice that this numerator or you can say this helpfulness numerator must be less than this denominator, right? So this is a condition that must be hold for each of the row instances. If this condition is false, I can say that that row is an invalid row. Again, this is a simple idea that you can implement using simple logical operator. Now, let me show you the simple code, how you can actually apply it. So if I say as df of, let me very first access the feature, which is a helpfulness numerator, right? If I say that if numerator will be greater than the denominator we have, then this will be a invalid row, right? If I will execute it, now wherever it is false, right? It means that this condition is not true. So let me consider this as a filter, right? I will consider this as a filter. Let me pass this filter inside my data frame. If I will execute this line of code, now it says that for these two rows, this condition is true. It means these are my invalid rows. Hence, I can say that, let me just copy the whole code right okay if i say that if it will be less than equals to if i will execute it these are all the valid rows right i can store it in df underscore valid let me execute it if i say df underscore valid dot shape now you will observe that there is a difference of count two because we have two invalid rows in our data frame so again if i say as dot columns so these are all the columns we have again regarding the life cycle we have where it is yeah this is that now let's deal with this duplicate rows area. Now from all these features, let me pick some subset of feature so that I can remove the duplicate rows to get unbiased results, right? I will pick as, okay, I can pick the user ID. I can pick, okay, what about the profile name of that particular user? What about the time at which a user is posting review, right? And what about the text or what about the summary he is posting? Because no user can type a same review on same time for different product. Hence, we can say that if all these four features are same, right, I can consider that whole row as a duplicate row, right? So let me apply this idea via simple Python code. I can say that df underscore valid. Let me call a duplicated function 
because it will return us okay the moment i press shift plus tab again by the way we have used this function multiple times right so what it does is it just return a boolean series which denote the duplicate rows right if i will mention okay these are the first two feature the third feature is exactly time and the fourth feature will be my text right if i will execute this line of code now it says that okay this is the boolean series boolean basically means it could have a value as false or true right or it could have a value as 0 and 1 wherever it means wherever it is false it means that that particular row is not duplicated but wherever it is true it means that that row is duplicated right i can consider this whole as a filter and let me pass inside in my df underscore validator frame if i will execute this line of code right now it says that it says that this is a count or you can say this is a count for my duplicate rows it means that among 5 6 8 right 4 5 2 rows these are the duplicate rows we have now anyhow i have to drop these rows otherwise we will end up getting some unbiased result so let me very first remove all these duplicate rows i can say that right df underscore valid dot drop underscore duplicate the moment i press tab look at this this is a function which is responsible to remove all the duplicate rows it says that it return a data frame with duplicate rows removed a very very simple function not a rocket science thing subset parameter basically stands for you have to mention subset of the columns right it says that only consider certain columns for identifying duplicates right by default it will use all the columns so let me pass the subset parameter over here i will say that in subset i have all these four features right now let me store this in a uh, data let me just execute it so if i say that data dot shape you will notice that this is the dimension in which i do not have any duplicate rows now regarding life cycle okay where it is right okay let's talk about this area which is let's say the data type section let me shed light on this area so if i say that data dot d types let me execute it again by the way regarding the data types we have discussed all these data types in much more great detail in our uber case study i think if i'm not wrong in second and third lecture right we have discussed all these data types like int 64 object and things like that for those of you who have forgotten let me explain it in a very layman terms so these are nothing but the variations of int right object is nothing but a simple string that we have in context of python right this is object this is object interesting this is int 64 it means that it uses 64 bits in order to store a number in your computer space right similarly in 64 in 64 okay now you will notice that right the time feature gets stored in a in 64 but from basic sense you can say that it must be stored in something known as a date time data type right it means that i have to convert this int into date time again by the way there are some inbuilt functions which will help us just to convert that right so if i say that data of time right the feature is a time let me execute it look at this these are the time values that we have in integer if i say that pd dot two underscore date time this is a function of a pandas which help you to convert your feature into date time data type if i will mention it and if i will execute it it says that okay this time you have a data type of date time 64 nanosecond again by the way this whole area is a nanosecond section because by default there is a parameter in this function itself which is a unit parameter by default the value of this unit parameter is a nanosecond and uh, this one which is a date right so this is a default date for my unix os or you can say this is a unix start time so if i say as can i customize one of the important parameters so let me explain you where we have that parameter look at this the unit parameter it receives a string type of values so instead of this nanosecond can i can i receive the value in the form of second if i will execute it now look at this now i have all the proper dates right so let me update the time feature as well i can just mention it and let me just execute it again by the way this is a simple warning look at this it is saying that this is the warning this is not a error for those of you who are encountering and if you want to get rid of this you can say as okay uh, let me import one more fancy package which is a warnings package from the warnings package let me import something known as filter warnings right this is filter warnings let me initialize the filter warnings and let me say as if any warning will come just ignore that right if i will again execute it look at this we do not have any warning so for those of you who have any doubt please do let us know 